The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Welcome to it. It's a road show. Hail Varsity here in Columbus, here at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. Thanks for the great folks for having us out here. Made the road trip up, and uh, well, let's just say it was interesting. Uh, unintentional carpool karaoke with the wife. I got to drive. It was her playlist. It wasn't sports radio. Uh, so I am uh, I, I'm jonesing for some talk. Uh, and uh, we have day one of spring football to get into. Numbers to dial up, 489-1240, 489-1240. Or can find us across the state here on the Hale Far City Radio Network, 1-800-825-5865. Junior is getting uh, his baseball season started later on in the evening against Columbus. So we're up here. Uh, we'll see if he... Uh, has received a code red or not on the bus from his teammates that uh, that may be warranted. But let me tell you about your friends here at Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, 23rd Street in Columbus. So if you're in Columbus, here on us on News Talk 900, you're invited out. Jeff and his bro are here, and that's awesome. Uh, they are uh, they don't have their darts ready, thankfully, uh, which is good. Uh, but listen, uh, they do have specials for you uh, here at uh, Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. Happy hour daily, 3 to 5, Monday through Thursday. That's $3, 16-ounce domestic draws, uh, $4, 20-ounce domestic draws, and $3 well-mixed drinks. Again, 3 to 5, Monday through Thursday, March Madness buckets, 15 bucks. And uh, Tim Zack, uh, the Tim Zack Band, is playing Friday at 9. No cover there. So Elijah's like, note to self, Friday in Columbus. We are going to see some live music. You walk to where Saturday after the morning, uh, the, the weekend edition? Eagle. You walked all the way to Eagle. Okay. How was that? How much uh, fireball did you take with you? None. No fireball whatsoever. And it should be noted. Uh, it was more than just walk. So what we've been doing as a part of, and I laid it out a couple months ago, the the uh, the house weight loss slash fitness challenge uh, that we have going at my house. What, what we actually did as a part of a, a gift from my brother was he got me a new rucksack. So I strapped 45 pounds to my back and then walk to Eagle, and I tell you what, I am still quite sore uh, from that, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm going to power through, and uh, maybe next time I'll walk to Columbus, because I tell you what, $3 beers during happy hour, that's a deal you cannot get in Lincoln, that's incredible from uh, the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, you said? Yes, yes, and, it is and, awesome. And how many times have they changed names? Do they were they formerly the Big 12 Sports Bar and Grill and before that the Big 8 I Sports didn't Bar ask. and Grill? <laughs> I, I, I did not ask that. I don't know if they have conference shifted or not, but uh, Corey, the owner here, good enough to have us up here. Uh, speaking of Corey's, in prominent location is a framed Corey Schlesinger. We drove through fullback country to get up here. We went through uh, Butler and East Butler, the, the home of the McAvickas. We're here in fullback central with the home of Corey Schlesinger. Uh, we love Slash and having him on from time to time. So, yeah, I mean, we, we've traversed through fullback territory. can watch the show and do so here. The Hale Varsity YouTube channel is where you can watch the show. You can find us on Twitter as well, the Hale Varsity Radio Twitter feed, at HVarsity Radio. Catch us 4 to 6. Catch uh, Damon and Andrew uh, 7 to 10 weekdays with Hale Varsity and uh, KFOR Facebook and Twitter as well. You have the numbers to get in. You can email chris at halevarsity.com. Ask Charlie, Coach McBride, coming up in one hour. Uh, so... Uh, you're invited to submit your questions for Coach McBride, Jay Moore in hour two as well. So a black shirt Monday in hour two. We have plenty to get into, though, Elijah, with spring ball opening up. We'll hit some NCAA tournament towards the end of this hour as well. But I just like, I've always liked what I hear from Coach Rule. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm 
uh, guzzling the, the Kool-Aid. Maybe it's it's a beer bong of, of just big red Kool-Aid for me. I don't know. But I love where he's at with, with his plan, not just from winter, but a, a reason for doing about everything, the competition, uh, be it sledding in the snow or picking a, a, a team leader, a group leader. I like where he's at, and he's like, look, 6 a.m. is garbage, but we had to do it today so we could get Easter sa- sa- uh, the, the Easter Saturday before Easter off. That was, that was the why, but he's always got a why attached to the things he's doing, and, and right now they're just trying to figure some things out. Yes, they're going to figure out who they want, what they want on offense. Yes, they're going to have some new faces that may not have been penciled in by you, me, or the fan base as starters on the offensive line or rotation guys. But two guys of note that have been moved, Jake Applegate, stud ball player from Southeast. He has switched over to the offensive side from being one of those hybrid defenders. Tagaloa. A really talented athlete out of California. Uh, he has gone from tight end to the defensive line or probably somewhere in that front seven with his athleticism and skill set. I mean, that's something that you look at. And, and Rule touched on why he moves, guys. This is where I think you can play and you can help the team. And if you don't want to move, you don't want to move. But there's some guys open to it. So uh, that's where Nebraska is at with the spring session just day one. But there's, there's a method to the, the madness here as we're out here at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, 23rd Street here in Columbus, kind of catty corner from the J.C. Penny, and uh, not far from the, uh, the, the old Panda Chinese restaurant. So swing on by if you're hearing us on News Talk 900. Doug Duda chimes in. Uh, Tim Zack is from Kearney. And uh, uh, Zock, not... Zach, thank you, Duda, for saving my backside once again. We also had uh, but, Ch- uh, Chuck Cullen wanting to save your backside, saying you're not beer bonging the Kool Aid; it's the Rule Aid. He wanted to make sure you got that. Ru- thank you, Chuck, for that. Uh, yes, but hey, spring break is over. We are going to put our, our beer bongs down and go to work, and that's what Nebraska did today. Let's hear from Gabe Irvin. We'll hear more from Coach Rule in just a moment. But really interesting comments. Gabe Irvin has turned heads with this new coaching staff. Gabe Irvin is a guy that we really liked watching when we were down in Norman. And then he had that gruesome knee injury. He's busted his butt to get back. We saw him run really hard in some limited action last year. But uh, this is Gabe Irvin. And he got into the difference in practice, the difference in a rule led practice Gabe Irvin from after practice today Matt Rule practice you know this whole staff you know under Matt Rule you know they kind of detail oriented I, I kind of remind me of my you know staff from high school you know a lot of detail oriented you know focused on the details you know and like willing to win you know they're really focused on that winning culture and trying to find the details you know each and every day trying to stack days to be the best you know team in the country well, you got to stack days. It's easier said than done. But if you focus on the now, Elijah, you can grow it. And, and Rule touched on just getting better every day and, and cleaning up what maybe wasn't so great. Well, and, and the detail-oriented thing is just a buzzword that I'm sure Husker fans want to hear because whenever you watch the Husker football team for the last couple of years, didn't look like a team that focused on the details. A lot of small things that would go wrong in games that would lead to big things. A, a small error on special teams. One guy doesn't stay in their lane on that one kickoff and now boom, it's 75 yards to the house. Uh, Guess what? Iowa blocked the punt and here goes momentum. Or you're you're false starting on third and two and now you got third and seven and you kill the drive and you have to punt it away. The little small details that seem so minor in a vacuum, but whenever you put them up against the, the weight of an entire game, it was the difference between wins and losses for the Husker football team. So I think hearing a player saying, you know what, the, one of the first things I noticed, the difference of a Matt Rule-led practice is how the details are, are oriented. That feels like a breath of fresh air based on what we've seen over the past few years. It, it is, and you still got to prove it on the field, mm-hmm. right? You still got to go win ball games on Saturday. We'll get into that with Jay Moore and Coach McBride, but details is what's ailed this program. 
you have guys that are tough. You have guys that are talented. You've won a lot of recruiting battles. But what's your depth like? Are you turning the football over? Are you, again, false starting? Are you holding? Are you having a special teams gaffe? I mean, all of it adds up. Little things turn into big things, as they say. And it's interesting to see where Nebraska can go in now 14 practices. Let's hear a little bit from Coach Rule as he spoke after practice today. And uh, this is Coach Rule here, day one of practice, cut two, as he kind of laid out the uh, the plan and what this first day was all about and, and then kind of zooming out here what, what they want to get accomplished. Well, you know, for me, it's the first time I've seen, like, these quarterbacks throw a ball. You know, it's the first time I've seen some of these guys, like, I've seen them move, but do football things. Um, You know, practice is kind of chaotic, so I really can't assess much until I go back and watch the tape. I'll just continue to say, like, you know, I don't know how if we're good or not, but we're a very coachable team. And so I I think a lot of it for us right now is about just establishing standards. We want to be a team that, you know, doesn't beat itself. Like, we want to be a team that goes out and executes. For me, that's, you know, everyone was in the building by 515. Uh, everyone was dressed appropriately. Everyone knew their assignments. That's a great start. You know, if we can if we can establish that basis, that standard of, hey, we're all going to be on time. We're all going to practice hard. We're all going to know our jobs. Then the town will take over. Again, little things, but things that are mandated, things that are mandatory. Are you Elijah, are you dressed appropriately for radio? I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, think about that that hands-on micromanagement, but this team needs it when you think about what it is or what it needs to be in the Big Ten compared to what it has been almost there. But they're establishing the standards not to bury the lead. We are getting to uh, the running back situation with Anthony Grant. Uh, we're getting to the situation... Uh, where Nebraska's got but got two guys that we we think will or are supposed to figure in on each side of the football. Tommy Hill and, and Anthony Grant both suspended, not for well anything egregious other than than not hitting the standard. Let's hear from Coach Rule. Go ahead. Well, I should really jump in and say, I know we're going to hear from Matt Rule on it, but it kind of gets down to what, what we've been saying for the past five minutes or so with, with Matt Rule's style of, of coaching and, and almost that micromanagement factor where, you know what, guys have to be in at 515. I'm going to make sure they're dressed appropriately. All this. And you brought up the analogy of a job, and it, it made me think, like, think back to your own high school jobs way back when, or maybe you've worked a job where you've had some high schoolers that are are working the front desk or something like that, or a college intern. Think about how you have to micromanage those individuals, those people, until they earn the trust of of their managers, of of corporate, of whatever. You earn the trust, and that's how you lose Mm -hmm. the micromanagement, and that's what it feels like Matt Rule's in the process of right now, is I'm going to continue micromanaging these guys and, and uh, Tommy Hill and Anthony Grainer included in that, they're all going to be micromanaged until they're living up to that standard, until they reach the point where they've earned the trust that I know they're going to live up to that standard, even if I'm not micromanaging them. And it kind of feels like right now we're still in a point with this team where everyone's getting micromanaged, but as these weeks and months go on, we're going to start to pull away and, and fewer and fewer guys get micromanaged. But this is the style that Matt Rule brings whenever he comes in and takes over at a job. Well, and, and this is his fourth flip. Right. Carolina's Carolina. It's the NFL. It's a different deal. But Baylor's Baylor. Temple was Temple. He's good at this. He knows what's worked, what maybe didn't go so well. And there's there's comfort. And there's almost, dare I say, an expertise with this because he's done it so often and so much. Well, here on the other side from uh, Coach Rule here on on the running back room, because he was pretty glowing about that. Uh, more comments from him on guys that are suspended right now. Thoughts on the tight end room. A little bit more from Gabe Irvin. As we wrap up this detailed segment, uh, Brennan's right. I mean, he's building leaders. And, and as a leader, you've got to model what you want in your program and how you want to lead it. So that's uh, important. He's there at 6 o'clock if... The rest of the crew needs to be there. So be it. Uh, Brennan also chimes in on, on your your Ruck backpack. I ordered one. My wife ordered me one. It's not as as, as vicious as yours. It's a 20-pound one. Oh, it's still helpful. But I got it. 
I know, but I got a 20-pound one that's coming, and I'm going to walk my happy, fat backside around the uh, the track here at over at Madonna to try and get more uh, more cardio going. It helps. But you've it, it, been it's re- my favorite form of cardio, and it's not even close. Like, I've tried running. I've tried speed walking. I've, I've tried jumping jacks, jump rope. I've tried it all. The ruck, it literally just feels like you're walking until you hit, like, that big hill, and then your legs start burning a little bit, and then you get back home, and you realize <laughs> how much energy you actually had to expend to, to get an extra 20 pounds or 45 pounds lugging around, you know? Well, you've been recruited. You are going to New Mexico with Brennan, uh, and you're going to help out with the elk tag. Say less. Never I had, can do it. That'd be good. We, I have a buddy that goes into the mountains for a week, Nick, and, and he goes, I think, elk hunting, but I think he's a bow hunter with it. You're going to get recruited here. Uh, Brennan's going to grab you for elk hunting. Searles, I'm sure, will nod in approval and, and, and snag you. Well, what I don't think and, Searles needs is more muscle on his on his trips. He should be good there. If, if he's requesting no, more he, muscle, there's been a, a sharp fall off he could, NFL career. He could delegate is my point. Searles is going to kill it. He might grill it, but you haul it. <laughs> uh, we are here on the road here in Columbus, the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, just off of 23rd Street, uh, Road Show, Monday, with Hale Bar City Radio. Good folks at Columbus, News Talk 900 having us up here. More comments from Coach Rule, day one of spring football. Hale Bar City presented by Currency. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Thanks for hanging out. Hale Varsity Radio Road Show Monday in Columbus. Fullback country as the uh, jersey from Detroit's own Corey Schlesinger proudly framed here at Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. A necessary road trip. Love our friends in Columbus on Newstock 900. Got to see David Gustafson, ops man for uh, our, our Alpha family up here. Always miss seeing Gus. He uh, was uh, partners with me for a lot of years in Columbus, and he's off to the ball diamond. Uh, Junior is there. Uh, I've been informed. Not only was I submitted to uh, the wife's singing and karaoke on the way up here as I drove, but she uh, dropped off a uh, meatball sub to Junior before he plays or watches. She She bought a giant rabbit. I don't know. Where did you get this from? She went to Wally World and then got a giant rabbit that's, I guess, going to ride shotgun on the way home. Oh, a stuffed because rabbit. We, yeah, stuffed rabbit. Oh, I was thinking yeah. she went to, like, Orschland and bought, like, a, a real big rabbit. And I'm like, well, that sounds like a, a life-changing type purchase. <laughs> no, she did that about 25 years ago. She did buy a pet rabbit named Claude. <laughs> He got neutered about eight years too late. Uh, I'll just leave that one be. Uh, but, um, yeah, so she has a giant stuffed rabbit in the uh, the vehicle. We're not going to get pulled over for alcoholism later at all, huh? With a rabbit? <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> well, <laughs> and a one-eyed, one-eyed driver, uh, my sweet, lovely wife, yeah. <laughs> What are you doing, ma'am? Well, the, the bunny tipped over. We had to swerve to, to pick. I'm kidding. Okay. So, I'm back to football is where I need to focus and uh, get going uh, with Nebraska and uh, day one of spring ball. Coach rule, uh, details matter. He's emphatic about that. And a little bit from rule here on, on the running back room. We heard from Gabe Irvin earlier this hour uh, in uh, part of his comments he, Irv, you had Coach Rule lay out what's uh, what's going on with this running back room and he wants to run the football Elijah he knows it's necessary you got to be good at it and, and I love that he laid out listen in the fourth quarter shutouts that's preferred by the defense offensively let's get 75 yards in the fourth quarter that sounds great, but that is how you put ball games away if you have a 100-yard rusher in the fourth quarter. Or as an offense, you get that ground and pound going where not only are you chewing up clock, but you're, those three- and four-yard runs turn into eight- or nine-yard runs. It, it, it's, a, it's a mirror to me to a lot of what Coach Osborne, how he did his business. Yeah, with, uh, with a 100-yard rusher, I, I mean, whenever I look at it, like, that's the the bare minimum for success in the Big Ten is you need to have a guy that more times than not 
you can count on to go get you 100 yards in a football game. And if he ends up with 85, you hope somebody can pick up the slack, get you another 15, or, or your passing game picks up that game. But th- that, to me, is what Big Ten football feels like, and really Nebraska football as a whole, is if – if you don't have a guy in the roster where it feels like, you know what, you wake up on Saturday and you don't feel like this guy can be a 100-yard rusher, there's something wrong with either your Big Ten program or your Husker football program. That's what I, I just think bare minimum around here should be is the fact that, you know what, you come around to football season every single Saturday, there's a guy where you go, you know what, that guy should get 100 yards today. Can you trust the line and can you trust the offense? And that's what Satterfield will want. Tight end play play action pro style but more so physicality and getting that three and four and five yard gain and and watching it burst open in the fourth quarter because you're the most physical and you're the most conditioned team here is coach rule on the running backs I like our backs. Gabe Irvin's probably been one of the um, stars of the offseason. He's one of the fastest guys on the team at 221 pounds, 222 pounds. To me, he can be, he can hopefully be that battering ram that puts games away. Again, four times last year, had the, had the lead in the third, going into the fourth or in the fourth quarter. And so, okay, I'll never get used to that. It's, you know, we, we're always going to preach a fourth quarter shutout. And fourth quarter shutouts are helped by the offense when you can have 75 yards rushing in the fourth quarter. So those are things that we believe in. And I think Gabe has had a sensational camp. A.J.'s got a ton of talent. A.J., you know, obviously played a little bit and got hurt last year. I'm excited to see what he can do. Ramir Johnson, you know, when I went, go back and watch the tape over the last two years, he's a guy that consistently flashed to me. He's healthy. He's doing a really nice job. So that was a little bit from Coach Rule on the running back room. A little bit more on that answer as we pick up Emmett Johnson also doing some good work. And then I think Emmett's had a really good spring. Anthony Grant's not with us right now. I've suspended Anthony um, uh, until uh, uh, such time as I feel like he's ready to rejoin the team, working on just academics and just general things with him. Nothing nothing bad other than just sort of our standards as a program. So Anthony's not practicing with us uh, today, and that'll be day by day. Good kid. Just have to get him in the, going in the right direction. Chris Hickman's not on the team. Tyree Johnson's not on the team. And neither one of those, both those guys on their own, you know, moved on. Other names that have moved on, Carney, uh, of course, the talented kid out of Norris. Uh, sad to hear that. Totally get it, though, in that tight end room. Carney not part of it. And Tommy Hill's also suspended a day-to-day. So let's focus on Grant here. Let's talk about Anthony Grant. Let's talk about Anthony Grant's t- road, road to college football. Florida State, JUCO, Nebraska, uh, really good story by Evan Bland. The, 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 the subject of the story was sad and terrible for Anthony Grant with how he lost his parents. But this kid's been through a ton, been through a ton. And you don't know by name who some of the either rah-rah or projected leaders were in winter conditioning. You, we, we don't know who was elected a captain or picked to be a group leader. We don't know who was removed as a group leader, leader other than somebody was, okay? And, and now you have a come to Jesus here where you're suspended. You're suspended from spring activities. There's A.J. Allen, there's Gabe Irvin, there's Ramir Johnson, there's Emmett Johnson, and... You had a guy in Anthony Grant that the first half of the season just earned about every yard on his own. There were some games the line was okay, but as the year went on, it looked like he was a shoe in to be a thousand yard rusher, Elijah, and that didn't happen. And then you had Grant trying to do too much with some jump cuts instead of running into contact, trying to just bounce it outside because. There was not a lot of faith that the hole was going to be there. There was just not much cohesion between the offensive line and Anthony Grant. Anthony Grant's an NFL running back, super talented guy. And again, Coach Rule would not keep the guy if he didn't think he was, what he said, a good kid. But what we don't know, but what, what's been allowed to slide in the locker room or by previous staffs that now, all right, you've maybe been warned once or twice, 
and now you're suspended. That's the hard line that you have to take if you're Matt Rule. There are other options, and there's other potential starters there to take Anthony Grant's job. So he's got to decide if he wants it or not. I, I hope it works out and turns around for him because he's a, he's a good dude, a talented kid, and he's been through a lot. And this is, again, that come to Jesus, that wake-up call that's been laid down by the new staff. But with, with all that Grant's been through in his career, uh, you just have to have that zero-tolerance level of accountability by your head coach. And, and, and Anthony Grant will be better for it, whether it's on the football field or not. And that's, that's my take as well. As, like the suspension itself, it, it's so far the first day or, or first week of spring practice. We'll see how long this lasts for. But it, it seems to me of just being more of a, a message to him and a message to the team as a whole that, you know what, there's things in life that are more important than football. And uh, I know that he's I think he's saying like, Anthony, like, I, I know you've been through a lot here, but we have our, our, our baseline standard here. And it's, it's not about how good you are as a football player. It's it's about building you as a man first and then as a football player. And we're going to build those aspects, hopefully in continuity. And I think it's more about sending a message and saying, you know what? I don't care how athletic you are. I don't care how talented you are. You're going to meet the standards of, of the Husker football team. And, and it, it doesn't matter what's happening off field. It doesn't matter what's happening on the field. We have a standard you have to meet, and you're going to meet that. I think it's a little bit about sending a message to the rest of the team. And obviously, it's about sending a message to Anthony as well. But uh, I don't think we as Husker fans should read too deeply into this situation here unless it becomes some sort of prolonged absence. I think for now, it's, it's more about just, you know what? This is the letter of the lots of new coaching staff coming in. And, yeah, you were the starter last year, but you're going to have to sit out spring practice until you get some other things straightened out. It's as simple as that. I don't, I don't think this needs to be hit on ad nauseum. Uh, mm-hmm. What I, I took away mostly from it is, is Matt Rule's just forthcomingness, his, his ability to be transparent with this. It does feel like a, a change from the last coaching staff, the fact that Matt Rule's going to get up there on day one of spring practice and say, pretty much unsolicited yeah Anthony Grant's not practicing right now he's suspended he's going to get some things figured out and then he'll be back on the practice field but that doesn't feel like something the previous staffs would have done just come out with that on day one without being asked in a press conference and and lay it out for you as it seems to actually be the case it seems seems black and white for Matt Rule Mm -hmm. well and and Steve asks a good question what does uh, Matt suspending players have to do with the previous coaching staff my inference and it may it may have nothing to do with it I just think of the 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 uh, the lengths this previous staff went to keep getting the ball to Maurice Washington before they finally said no dice. That's a previous example, not even close to to Anthony Grant as far as personality. Okay, but is this the first time behavior is called out and acted upon? I don't know. I don't know how attention to detail or hands-on the previous staff was in comparison to rule i just know that all right you're going to do x y and z to to be part of this practice squad uh, or you're not going to be on this practice squad you're not going to be allowed to practice i'm going to hold you accountable there Uh, there's uh, a chance not just with this previous staff but name a staff right that they'd be worried about losing a guy like Anthony Grant. Mm-hmm. So let's not let's not get in his business. Let's not get in his kitchen. And well, I guess it's not that big a deal. For example, if he's late or if he misses a class. And I don't know what the details are. I'm just throwing out examples as to why guys are going to miss time with the college football team. So it's just a different set of rules that are are being enforced. The, the rules have probably been the same. What's the enforcement level like? And and maybe. Maybe there's a test going on, too. Maybe if you're Anthony Grant, new staff, what can I get away with? We're all good at that. (laughs) So, fair enough. We'll wind down here this first hour. uh, Big Ten Bar and Grill, Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, 23rd Street in Columbus, a road show. Monday, Hail Varsity continues. We're presented by Currency. And now. And now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. Say hi to Brian. He uh, popped over. So uh, the uh, folks, the Hale Varsity listeners in Columbus, awesome, man, to see everybody pop in here and grab a cold one. I want to remind you, Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill off of 23rd Street. So the Tim Zock Band, thank you, Doug Duda, 9 p.m. Friday. No cover. 
March Madness bucket specials, $15. My wife just ordered a bucket for herself. All good. Uh, happy hour, 3 to 5. Daily specials, Monday through Thursday. That is a happy hour. 3 to 5? That's awesome. So we got about 18 minutes. We'll get the old shot clock going, Elijah. $3.16 ounce domestic draws, $4.20 ounce domestic draws, $3 well mixed drinks. Again, happy hour here, Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, 3 to 5, Monday through Thursday. She's crushing a taco salad right now. You got to get your that, that. Arms and fingers away. That, that, that pregame sustenance, a whole bucket of beer. Get a little food in you. I mean, I, I she's think doing a bucket. She's doing a taco salad. She bought a giant stuffed rabbit. It's how you save money on the concession stand out at the baseball field. It's it's simple. Yeah, she's going to come at me with a sharp object. NCAA tournament. I found the one bracket that's accurate. It's on the wall here at Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. Let me ask you this. It's a real serious question. Were you cheering for Creighton yesterday? Were you cheering for Creighton yesterday? Going to say yes, absolutely. Loved what I saw. And some of you might be going, you goon. Other friends in Omaha, of course you're cheering for, for Creighton. It's a Nebraska thing, good for them. Absolutely good for Creighton to go off like they did. And uh, they are on to the Sweet 16. You know, Coach Max, uh, very good at what he does. He's recruited at an amazing level. They are uh, poised to knock off the other smart kids at Princeton and get to an Elite Eight. Were we not saying with the, the rest of the Metro that this team's uh, an Elite Eight Final Four squad? They went through a really bad valley, and then they found their way to, uh, to right the ship, and they're hitting it, man. They took good shots. They were on fire for a good period. They defend well enough. Baylor switched their identity a bit yesterday. They always won with defense and pressure, and they scored just enough to beat you. Well, Baylor thought, okay, so we're, we're on uh, over the speakers here. Uh, so, yeah, uh, busted train of thought. Creighton's good. They're, on, they're moving on, and it's going to be a, a party in Omaha if they do what hasn't been done for a long, long, long time. And, Again, they're living up to that talent and hype level. They're peaking, Elijah, at the right time. For for fear of being way too down the middle here, which uh, you don't want to be in sports talk radio, uh, I really like – I'm not rooting against Creighton, but I'm not rooting for him either. Uh, that's how I feel is like – I understand where the, the, the anti-Creighton people come from, but I also understand where the j people come from. And it's, again, a down-the-middle take. But, like, yeah, when Creighton's on, on TV, I will watch that game before I watch the other games. I will follow along and see what Creighton's doing. If Creighton loses at the end of the game, I'll have a take ready for the radio, but it's not going to make me sad in any way, shape, or form. If Creighton wins, I'm not going to celebrate either. I'll be happy for my friends who root for Creighton. I'll be, yeah, congrats to you guys. You get to watch Team in the Sweet 16. Wish I could say the same. But, like, Creighton to me is 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 just... I, I don't know. I, I guess I don't have enough time of day to, to focus on Creighton and Husker Athletics all the time. So I don't root against them. I don't root for them. I, I cover them. I, I'll know what to say about them. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't have a, a definitive take on Creighton. I just say, you know what, they're an in-state school. I know a lot of people around here and a lot of people that I'm good friends with do root for Creighton. But I've never been to a Creighton basketball game. It's, a, it's as simple as that. Like, they're, they're, they're not my team, but I'm not going to root against them either. It's different to root for them versus jump on the bandwagon and become a fan. Sure. There, there's, there's a little difference there. And with Nebraska having the win over Creighton like they have this season, I mean, that's a, a big-time kudos to Nebraska basketball and what, what they were able to do at least uh, one Saturday and, and win up there. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, Charlie McBride is coming up here at about 30 minutes on Monday with Charlie. You still have a chance to get your questions in. Ask Charlie. You can either send him in on the stream, the Hale Varsity YouTube channel, or the Hale Varsity Twitter handle, at HVarsity Radio. Uh, do so and uh, do it that way. Uh, KFOR Facebook and Twitter is where you can also watch the show. 
uh, we'll get those Ask Charlie segments. Jay Moore with us in hour two. So it's a black shirt hour two on Hale Varsity. 23rd Street here in Columbus, Big Ten Sports Bar and Grilla. Monday Roadshow is up here for uh, some baseball. Basketball thoughts as we continue on. Uh, Eric Musselman, <laughs> in a moment of joy, have you ever ripped your shirt off? I have not. I have not wanted to frighten family members, loved ones, people I'm with. I have not shaved my armpits willingly either. That's another swing and a miss from Musselman. Great coaching job. They have three NBA picks on that team. They uh, absolutely needed to be where they're at, and that's the Sweet 16. They outlasted Kansas without Bill Self, so uh, hampered Kansas, and that's all right. But this tournament's shaping up. K-State had a really impressive win. Uh, Talked with our dear friend Jack Ebeling, Mr. Michigan State. He was, uh, dare we say, to the wee hours with Tom Izzo last night. I texted Jack yesterday and said the Schmitz are watching Michigan State pulling for Sparty. Junior and Mama have their green on. Well, he told Izzo that last night, and I didn't get a, a voice memo from Izzo, but he did say Izzo's like, well, that's a that's a good group of Schmitz down there in Lincoln. Really. So that's yeah. Well, I, I don't know story? if Jack's be asking me, but it was it was a it was a five forty five a.m. text this morning. So we shall see. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Uh, so as we look at the Sweet Sixteen, uh, Creighton a chance to to move on. Gonzaga that was a good ball game. Listen, last night Gonzaga just had enough to to outlast uh, their. TCU was good. TCU was really good last night, but just couldn't hit some timely threes. Indiana flat out embarrassed. So it's okay to root for Creighton, and it's okay to be embarrassed of the Big Ten. I mean, legit. Those are the takeaways. UConn looks strong. Uh, That is something to look at. Tennessee looks good. I know you're big on Tennessee this year. Mm -hmm. FAU has been fun. Really a, a great Sweet 16 for the Thursday matchups and an impressive Xavier, Texas will be dynamite. And then Houston could be in trouble. There we say, Houston, we have a problem. Slap me, sorry. But Miami could be uh, the uh, the next in line here to ruin. Alabama has is, is just got a clear path, don't they? I think uh, San Diego State is decent, but Bama is just too locked in where they just wear you down and then explode is who's the cinderella right now uh, princeton. would you say princeton's a cinderella right uh, aside, now but aside from Pr- princeton obviously is a, is a 15 seat but beyond that is there anybody else that you're like okay F- F- they're F-A-U's kind the of next, a surprise fa use the next big thing to me but they're a nine seed yeah they, and they look way more put together than a lot of nine seeds we'll wind out this first hour Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, is coming up. It's a road show here at Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. We're in Columbus. Uh, Corey Schlesinger territory. Hail Bar City continues presented by Currency. And now. And now. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. We are back here, Hale Varsity Radio Roadshow Monday. We're presented by Currency for all your equipment financing needs. Go Currency. Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, where we're at on 23rd Street. We've had uh, more and more folks pop by, which is great. Uh, Really awesome happy hour here. I've not partaken. This is, despite what Elijah's betting, this is just a cherry Coke. It's not... uh, rum and diet well then that, you'll, you'll that's be, uh, hooksies you'll be glad to know that this is not a water bottle full of vodka it is in fact a water <laughs> bottle uh, it was actually here's your fun story this water bottle i'm holding you can see it on live stream this was intended for governor jim pillen he didn't touch the water and i was getting thirsty last segment i was eyeing it over in the studio because uh jim pillen comes in for the uh the monthly annual or the monthly yeah. governor's call-in show in the studios mr pillen uh, via pride of columbus so right through the window i see this water bottle staring at me and i go 
That's, that's, uh, that's supposed to be Jim Pillen. That's a powerful water bottle. That's the governor's water bottle. So I brought in, it's now Elijah Herbal's water bottle. And, so uh, you're going to go to e- you're going to go to eBay. Somebody back in the day, I think, would swipe either Polini's Mountain Dew bottle and it would end up, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would end up on YouTube, on, on, uh, uh, shoot, help me out. eBay? Here. Fa- now it would be like Facebook Marketplace or something, probably. Right. But the, but you're not drinking out of Pillin's water bottle, are you? I don't think he opened it. It was, okay. it was still sealed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I just, just, <laughs> hell, who cares? I'm thirsty. We're just going to take a pull here off of Pillin's water I bottle. I have an immune system for a reason. It's doing it. Well, of course. I mean, you're rucking a 45-pound uh, backpack to help me out here. Eagle. Eagle and back, uh, not back. No, the, the the car ride took us back. Oh, there was a so it wasn't round trip. Oh it no, that'd be, that'd be way. like that'd be like damn near a marathon. I'm not. No, I'm I'm still fat for that. That's no. <laughs> Good, it's fine. It's fine. Well, uh, we invite you out here. We're gonna have to do something in the future uh, to get back out here to Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill in Columbus. Great folks. A lot of fun to, to see uh, different listeners pop by. And Charlie McBride is 10 minutes away. Ask Charlie. Submit your questions to Coach McBride. What do you want to hear from Coach Charlie? And uh, do that here. Can do so on the Stream Hail Varsity YouTube channel, the Hail Varsity, Hail Varsity Twitter feed, at HVarsity Radio as well. Uh, a couple of simple ways to do that. We are able to, to see the correspondence that way. And Scott uh, chimes in with uh, the suspension talk. We spent time on Anthony Grant. Appreciate Scott tuning in to me. The suspension says the team uh, playing is a privilege, and if certain standards aren't met, the privilege will be taken away. I like so. That. That's, that's, a, that's a really good take. And, and Rules said it as much himself. Playing's a privilege, and, and he started some of his different media sessions that way. Uh, reminder about getting buckled up. Your friends at the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety Office. Use your seatbelt. It saves lives. It prevents injuries only if properly worn. Buckle up. A message from the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety Office. Brennan uh, says, I once took a Christian Guzman half-drank water bottle. I felt weird for saying that now. <laughs> Half, uh, half drink is different than unopened. This is now open by Nick, me. But. Nick is throwing shade. You know what I'm saying. We'll just leave that one float right there. Hour two on the way here in Columbus with Hale Varsity. The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbal. Back with you, Tower 2. It's Hale Varsity Radio Roadshow Monday here at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill, 23rd Street in Columbus. Hope you're doing all right. Thanks for popping by. Uh, great uh, lineup here at uh, Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. Tim uh, Zock, the uh, band is playing Friday at 9. March Madness buckets on special. Uh, again, the wife went through a whole bucket of beer herself. Happy hour 3 to 5, Monday through Thursday. That is 16-ounce domestics, 20-ounce domestics. $3 well mixed drinks. Going to be a black shirt hour two. Jay Moore coming up. We welcome in Mr. Black Shirt. Another Monday with Charlie. Charlie McBride with us. Coach, are you you still enjoying the sunshine down in the desert? How you doing? Well, I'm, I'm doing good. It's, it, it, it's kind of like Michigan. They're starting to challenge me for the different colors of gray here. In the sky. So, <laughs> so, but I'll tell you what, I had, a, I had a, a, a friend of mine who I coached with here at Arizona State. I asked him how, I asked him how old he was. He said, 98. I said, well, that's good. Are you still driving? Oh, yeah. He said, well, I'll come and pick you up, take you out to lunch. He said, if I knew I was going to lose, 
if I knew I was going to live this long, I'd taken better care of myself. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But that, that, that's typical of Larry Cantera. He's a, quite a guy. How was the ride? Good? I didn't know he's going to pick me up <laughs> some other day. He got busy today. The guy's uh, an amazing person. He uh, he had, I think, Andy Reid and Bill Callahan and the guy that coached up at the Vikings and all on one staff at, when he was the head coach at Northern Arizona. And he had a pretty good staff there. So, you know, he, he, he's still going. He was down in Florida with his grandkids you know, the last week. So he's 98 and still rolling. Hmm. That's awesome. Charlie McBride's with us on Hale Varsity Radio. Coach, it was day one of spring football. And really good comments from Coach Rule after this first practice. Uh, what did come out, though, is a couple of guys are suspended. They're not kicked off the team, but they're suspended, one being Anthony Grant, Nebraska's uh, nearly 1,000-yard rusher. Uh, Coach Rule said it wasn't, you know, it's not anything bad, but there's just a standard that you have to meet to, to be able to practice. And what's your reaction to that with Rule suspending a couple of guys that, well, you're going to need on Saturday, but you got to be pretty, pretty firm with your rules. That's right, and, and that uh, doing it quick is a, a good way to get it started. I mean, not that you want it to happen, but um, uh, the other players will see what's going on and maybe you know, you know, take it for what it's worth. I mean, it's it's uh, showing that he isn't going to fool around with them. And I think with the numbers right now, you know, there's everybody is <laughs> dispensable, I think. But uh, that's a good – I I agree with them. Well, Charlie, I want to get your take, though, on, on suspending a guy for a practice. I mean, it's 6 a.m. on a Monday, and I'm sure those guys still had to be around the team facility this morning, but – does that necessarily feel like a punishment to these guys? The fact that you know it's the first day of spring practice, six a.m. You, you maybe get a, get a sleep in a little bit longer. You don't have to go get uh, your head taken off at six a.m. by a defensive lineman. Like, is that a punishment, really? <laughs> well, so well, depending if they don't, if they're trying to get them to class in the morning and going quick, it's kind of a rush job. I know in the summer we had, uh, during summer school, we had 7 o'clock workouts when, we, when camp started. And um, when we got done, we were going to move it to 9.15 or something like that. And the players didn't want to move it. They wanted to stay at 7. And, uh, you know, they get a little more rest between practices that way. So you never know. <laughs> Charlie McBride's with us a Monday with Charlie. It's Hale Varsity Radio. We're here in Columbus, Nebraska, the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill uh, Roadshow Monday. So, Coach, did you ever surprise a player either checking up on them or just show up unannounced to make sure they got the point, uh, I, I guess is what I'm asking, uh, to, uh, to make sure they were, they were doing what they were supposed to be doing? Well, I don't. I I think you know you set your rules out early, and uh, you know sometimes I remember the captains are repeating the rules to the kids. I mean, in the first meeting, they actually read the rules. If I remember right, and uh, you know sometimes it's a little more uh, straightforward when the when the captains are doing it. Um, you know, reminding them what are some of the things you know, and that. It, 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 it adds up a little bit uh, more, I think. You know, kind of talk with coaches, it's kind of like after a while, your parents saying the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> it gets a little old. <laughs> so, but I mean, I think it, you know, the, the way they, the way they're doing things right now, it seems to be, you know, clicking pretty good the way it w- went. And I, I don't see any, you know, anything that's, you know, it's going to cause any problems. Charlie McBride is with us here. It's Hale Varsity Radio. And, Charlie, when you look at the start of spring practice, a lot needs to happen between now and the end of April. And and I want to get your take from a coaching perspective. How 
how do you transition from winter conditioning to spring football effectively? Is there, in your opinion, a right and a wrong way to get into spring football? <laughs> well, the, the thing now is when you have a new staff, that the, the learning process is, is really going to probably be really important as far as as far as their uh, playing too time. Uh, because the guys that can learn it the quickest and are the better players are naturally going to be, you know, the guys that a step ahead. Uh, so they they may be. A, uh, we've done it, I think, a couple of ways. That we load them up, for example, during the spring, just go like heck and do the best you can, and then they will, uh, you know, kind of remember it in, in the fall. Remember we did that. Uh, if you don't, they have you have to start teaching in the fall. So, you know, it's your if your schemes and your your offensive plays and so forth. You know, plays have a lot to do with the backs and the linemen with all that footwork stuff. And I mean, it can you can know the play, but you know, a lot of times it's how do you get there is is important too. So, you know, it's 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 you know. It's, Sometimes it can be a little rough, but uh, and confusing to them because they may know the plays, but they're they're fundamentally they're not doing a good job, or vice versa. Coach, I want to ask you about a couple of guys that are switching sides of the ball. You've got Tagaloa that was a defensive. He's now on the defensive side of the ball, but was recruited as a tight end, uh, pretty athletic as a tight end. Where do you think he could fit in this front, This this either the line or the linebacking core? You also have Jake Applegate. He's a really long and explosive athlete from Lincoln Southeast. He was uh, kind of that, that hybrid safety type prototype to me, a lot like a Gifford. They moved him to. Uh, they want to move him to the hybrid fullback role. Touch on just switching guys to a different side of the ball and how that can really help out both uh, the offense and the defense. Well, it's uh, if you go back and look at uh, Miami when they were noted for their speed and a lot of the things uh, they they brought in a couple of real athletic tight ends and and played all of a sudden they're playing defensive ends and I think one of them ended up in the NFL but that that can happen very quickly uh, um, Terry Keneally you know uh, <laughs> was an offensive lineman to start with and I went across the field and grabbed him and just pull, <laughs> pull him over you know to, to that side and he ended up being a heck of a player for us so there's a lot of guys. I think Jason Peter was an offensive lineman. Some, you know, uh, he, I think he played some offense when he was in prep school before he came to Nebraska. So it's it's uh, you know sometimes it's the better thing. Um, I I mean just me coaching change positions. It gives you a new light. It gives you new um, you know energy and uh, to learn the stuff and. You know, if you're excited about it, now I moved Eddie uh, Stewart from strong safety to linebacker, and he's ready to cut my throat. So, you know, that that could go on. And he, you know, he wanted to be a strong safety. Well, but he was such a good tackler, and he was had some great quickness. Better, he had better quickness really than he did speed. I mean, he was fast. But uh, to be a linebacker, he had, he had really he had good instincts, and you could tell that, you know, from playing the line, uh, the strong safety position that he played when he came. And but you know, sometimes you're not loaded up at a position, and you just have to find a guy to get over there because you don't have anybody that that's really proven. And sometimes there's those guys that are on offense or defense or. You know, and and can move to the other side of the ball without a problem. And again, it's an intelligence thing too. Coach, I think from a, a fan's perspective, maybe from the media perspective as well, a position switch kind of feels like the last chance for a player of like, well, you didn't work out at tight end, so let's try you somewhere else. Or you didn't work out at safety, so let's try out on offense. From a coach's point of view, is that necessarily the case? 
Well, that can happen. I mean, you know, I don't, to be honest with you, I can't remember, you know, guys doing it happening uh, so much, but maybe, uh, you know, it can happen. I think that, uh, you know, you could actually maybe move a couple of times. I, I know that for a fact, a lot of guys, if size wise is the factor, you could move. We could have moved a couple of guys that were pretty big defensive ends inside very easily. And they had been moved, say, from offense in the first place. So that would be almost two moves that they, you know, they've made. And, uh, but I, I, Kenny Walker would be a good example. They tried him everywhere, you know, they could. And, and uh, they, they, they started to, he couldn't pick up the, the checks, dur- you know, during the game. Mm-hmm. And so Tom just uh, didn't know what to do. I said, well, let's make a defensive lineman out of him. And we did. And we were doing a lot of slanting. And our, anytime we changed our front, uh, Pat Engelbert at that time was the nose tackle. He would just hand signal them. And, and they had, I told him, you make up your own signals between the two of you. And don't let me tell you what they are. You two do it to, together because it was easier for Kenny to do it that way, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he, he, he did, I only remember one case where it didn't happen. And if you look at the film, you'll see Pat chewing him out all the way to the sideline after the series was over. <laughs> but but that's what you have to do. You know, you have to find find a way to do it. And just like you do with kids. You have to find what turns them on, and each kid's different as their face. Coach McBride with us, a Monday with Charlie. It's Hale Varsity Radio. Coach, we're going to get to the Ask Charlie segment, and our friends at uh, Go Big Redcast submitting this to you. Uh, Question for Charlie, uh, what, when Nebraska switched to that 4-3 from the 5-2, Coach, what was your process like for the other guys on staff to learn the scheme, team and and, and coaches? Well, the, the the thing is, is well, we did take we did take one done defensive lineman out of the game, you know, and we put another linebacker in there, so you got a speed factor right there uh, on it. And he really, we really only had two true defensive linemen and a speed factor came when we moved these guys from say in the secondary to linebacker our only true linebacker if you go back and look uh, say Jay Foreman for example you know strong big kids that can you know have good instincts put them in the middle and they they could take care of pretty much take care of the inside and drop Mm -hmm. in in the what we call the hole basically it uh, and uh, so our only true, really true linebacker was uh, was our middle linebacker, and the rest of them we kind of re- we recruited as strong safeties and guys that could really run. Uh, and a linebacker, if he could really run, he would be a Sam backer for us. But uh, really speed guys, quick guys would play will linebacker for us in, that, in those days. And and putting a hand on the ground for guys like Treb, say for example, when he came, he was a stand up outside backer, and all he did was put his hand on the ground, and it gave him more time to rush the passer rather than dropping. Hmm. Charlie McBride with us on Monday with Charlie, Coach. We're gonna holler at you next Monday, and we'll get ready to do this again. It's always fun to talk some spring ball with you. Many thanks for making time with us and continue to enjoy that Arizona sunshine, all right? Well, they can make two practices out of one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want, you're you're, you're, you're advocating for a two-a-day. <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe they're going a little longer now with that extra hour. <laughs> I like it. I like so, it. Coach, you take care. Best to you and your family, okay. all right? Thanks for having me, guys. I'll talk to you next week. Bye now. All right. All-State, two-year starter, and rush in for the Big Red and NFL vet. Is Dudeness or uh, Duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. It's Blackshirt, Jay Moore with Hale Varsity Radio. 
Back into it, a tale of our city radio road show here in Columbus at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. We welcome in Blackshirt Husker NFLer Jay Moore to the show as spring football is kicked off. And if you're watching video, Jay is. Brother, do you launder that stuff, or are you a master at ironing because it's a crisp white dress shirt but no tie? How are you doing? Good. Uh, full disclosure, no. You got to uh, you got to get the shirts now that are made of out of, like, more athletic material. They don't wrinkle, and they wash better, so you just got to do a little upgrade. That's that's where I've gone. And they, they just feel better. Those old cotton, you know, button-ups, those, those, those don't feel very good on, so you got to – Got to venture out and get the new, the new uh, upgraded stuff. Note to self: be six five two forty and still bricked. Uh, I wish I was two forty. <laughs> well, no, he, he's got a point though. Like the the stretchy jeans, the stretch fit jeans. It oh, started out. It started out as jeggings, and, and then they found like a better in between. It changed my life for the better. I, I didn't want to wear okay. jeans until they made the stretch fit. The athletic wear stuff is it's changed the world. 100%. That's that's very fair. Uh, I don't know how to transition this into spring football, but the the, the topic of feeling better, right? That's what you want going sure. into spring and after spring. If you're a Nebraska football fan, as you know, Coach Rule met uh, the media this morning. A few players talked as well, and Jay, who knows if as as Coach Rule put it, if we're any good to quote Rule. But the guys are, are coachable. That's huge. But two, man, it just seems like he's got a plan from step one through step five with where he wants his football team to go, at least from a direction standpoint. That It's all sounded good. Yeah, I think that's – he knows – he has a process, and he's had to use this process – you know, this is if you want to count Carolina Panthers. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, you know, this is his fourth time of instituting his process at a new place. We all know Temple, Baylor, uh, Carolina Panthers, and now Nebraska being his fourth one. So he knows what he what he what he wants it to be. He know he's been through this process before. Whether it was at Temple, it was at Baylor. I don't know if he count, the NFL is such a different animal. I, I can't even like put him. Can't really even count that because it's so vastly different. You know, you uh, he he probably dealt with ninety players tops at one time. I think that was the start of training camp. But obviously, you're getting down to fifty three guys plus. I think what eight or nine guys in your practice squad during the season. So, just obviously very very different. But going forward, like I said, he has his checks and balances. He knows where he needs to be at certain points, and he he understands it's going to take. You know, it's it's not. This is a different circumstances than what he had at Temple. This is different circumstances he had when he was at Baylor. But I think he knows at certain points throughout spring ball, throughout training camp, and throughout the season, he he thinks this team should be at a, at a certain point. And if it's not, then those, those I don't know if you want to call them uncomfortable conversations need, need to be had, but something needs to change or something needs to uh, be tweaked or do something because obviously you've got to be at certain expectations, certain levels to be a successful football program. And he's been a part of many, many uh, successful programs. So I don't doubt his process whatsoever. I just, I just don't know off the, you know, I, I don't know if this is, if it, I mean, what he had at Baylor, when he went to year one at Baylor, that's, that's again, that's, that's, uh, that was, that was something that no one ha- has ever had to deal with. You know, he may be getting, you know, 45, 50 guys on scholarship and you arrived, arrived on campus after the Art Brown situation. So I think going forward, though, he, he knows he, he knows the process. He knows the structure. His coaches knows what they expect out of, out, of, out, of, out of them as well. So I think that's the greatest thing is this isn't their first time together as with this, the with the assistants on staff. So they, they the expectation levels that Coach Matt Rule has – his assistants and his rest of his staff understand that as well. So it's a pretty streamlined, you know, I, I can't say efficient process because we just don't know how efficiently they're going to get to what he wants and what we need to get back to in winning football. Does it take one year? Maybe hell it could take two or three years. We don't know. Uh, but I, he, he does understand. And I, I know it's, I know this is a very long winded answer, but he definitely knows what his, his process, the timelines and what he wants it to look like. Jay, whenever you talk about his his timeline and his process, one of the noted change that changes that I saw today 
was just how forthright he was with the situations regarding Anthony Grant and Tommy Hill, where he came out and said, you know what, they haven't been living up to expectations on and off the field, and uh, Anthony Grant's a guy that's going to be suspended in, until he's able to figure that out. And, and that just strikes me as a, as a change from previous coaching staffs, how how forthright that information was. And I want to get your reaction to that. What is that, that message that's being sent to those guys? And also, what do you make of the coach coming out and saying that in the first day of spring practice? I have no problem with it. He's, he's very black and white. You either, it's either this or it's that. There's no, there's no in between. I think of the previous staff, there was quite a bit of in between. And, I, I, and that affects your players and that affects your assistant coaches, how to, how to manage your, your staff and how to manage your players properly. We know it's either this or it's that. It's pretty easy to go along about your day. You know, if, if you're always kind of working in in between stuff and in that gray area, man, that gets that gets hard because you're like, man, maybe maybe this works, maybe it doesn't. You actually work in very strict expectations and, and strict uh, guidelines, man. It's pretty easy to understand what's going to work and what's not going to work. And if you're upfront about those, there should be nothing that you should have uh, no issues with that. Cause I know just from my time being in, in other places playing in, in different uh, with different organizations and in, in pro football, you know, some, some places didn't have a very black and white. There was a lot of grayness and that's not, that's hard to function as, as uh, an employee or even as a player. Uh, if, if there isn't strict, you know, requirements and recommendations and strict, you know, guidelines to, to, to go about your business. So I have no problem with it. And that's the way it needs to be. And, and you need it more. You need it more when you're dealing with 18 to 20, 21 year olds as well. It's a little easier. You can have maybe some, a little more gray area or even in the NFL, you, you have your, you have your guidelines, but guess what? If you don't meet them, you're cut, you know, we'll go find someone else. So I'll gladly meet these guidelines and, and what needs to get done. So, uh, you get, glad to hear him come out and say this because it needs to be done with, with young uh, college athletes. Jay Moore is with us. Hail Varsity Radio here at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill in Columbus. Happy hour going on um, daily, 3 to 5, Monday through Thursday. And uh, domestic draws, $3, 16 ounces, of course. Uh, domestic draws, uh, 20 ounces, 4 bucks. That means Jay Bird's going to jump in his uh, family truckster and haul on up here. March Madness buckets, $15. Can't get those prices uh, in Lincoln. No, the uh, the Tim Zach band is rocking and rolling Friday at 9 p.m. No cover there. So uh, big thanks to uh, the great folks here at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill for having us. Jay Moore with us. Find him on Twitter at jmore 44 Catch him on Big Red Wrap-Up. Jay, let's go to that structure and discipline portion of the show <laughs> with 18 to 20 year, 22-year-olds. Just how... If you were to percent, put a percentage on it from your time and also being around the program like you are, is it still the old give them an inch, they'll take a mile, them being the players, if there aren't hardcore standards or checks and balances? Some guys are like you or like Amir. Those are the two examples where you're intrinsically motivated. You're not going to jack around. There's other guys that you got to tell them uh, practice starts at 515 to get them there at 6. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And that's just, I think, no matter what you go through and what team you're on, I, I guarantee you there's guys like that at Alabama and Ohio State and, and Georgia, too, that are, that if you give them, if you give them two inches, they're going to take two feet. You know, it's just how it is. That's just, that's just people in general. You have your people who are very disciplined, detail oriented. Uh, they're five minutes early. You know, they leave uh, 10 to 15 minutes after practice. You know, they're going to do their things. But there's some good people you just got to stay on and, and, and hold them accountable. You just, you just have to. You have to. Some people have to have their hand held. And especially at this level when you're dealing with young, young athletes who are away from home for the first time, who are seeing, you know, the, the, this, the, the stress levels of being a college athlete. That's just the, the class loads. That's the practice. That's the meetings. They've never done this before. I don't care how good of a football program you're at in college you never put this much time and effort into anything you've done up to this up to this point in your life so i think you have to have some handheld you you know but players and and especially the coaches know and and even on the strength staff you know that the 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 people you have to pay attention to and you, you have to nudge and, and remind them and you know the people you can let them go because you know that they are going to be there on time they're going to do their 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 they're going to go on their checklist and make sure everyone's hit 
they're gonna they're not gonna miss a rep on a workout and you know there's some guys you have to pay attention to because they will try to <laughs> it just always happens they will try to skip a set and a certain lift and try to get out there early uh so it's just that's just the nature of the business and there's it's fun it's you even see guys like that in the nfl and in, in the nfl the guys are able to the guys who are able to you know get away with that are the really really successful ones and uh, have um, you know the talents for like you know what you you can you can do some of these things we know on Sundays you're still going to show up and and uh, get 150 yards and uh, on you know seven catches and we'll glad you pay your 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 money all the money you want so uh, yeah it's you're just always gonna you're gonna always have those uh, situations as a coach um, especially when you're dealing with you know the 18 to 22 year olds. Jay, what's a fair jump? for this program where do you kind of view them right now and what in a month where can they be uh that's a broad question but let's talk gap here talent and then direction and of course expectation yeah spring, spring ball is always interesting when especially going with the new staff uh, i did it with with coach callahan you know it's you you're just kind of getting a feel of how they're, they're, the coaching, uh, you know, your position coach goes, your the defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator goes, you know, the, the structure of practice, how, how is it different than what you are doing previously? You're just kind of feeling it out. And then kind of once you get to that first week or so of spring ball, then you're like, okay, now you can kind of get down to work and, and get everyone hopefully on the same page by now and work into that one common goal. And, you know, I don't think, you know, the talent level isn't that far off in my opinion. I think there's enough talent here to have. They should have been winning. This team should never have been missing bowl games. You know, it's just, like I said, the attention to detail just was not there with, with the previous staff. So I, I think with the attention to detail, that rule in the staff's going to bring forward, you know, the accountability, the work ethic, just doing the simple stuff right is that's going to get you an extra three, three wins right there. So I, and you can say the talent level is, is, is whatever, but I just I don't think it's it's that big of a takeover. I still think it's vastly different, obviously, than Baylor and Temple. Uh, I think it's you know he, like I think he said it best. You don't go into Iowa, you know, and keep them from going to the Big Ten West or have become the Big Ten West champion, you know, and 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 beating them in Iowa City, and you have no there was no really. Value. To, I mean, other than your pride, but it wasn't like you, you knew that was your last game of the season. There was no bowl game, so I, I think the talent's good enough. I think the mentality, the mental toughness, the, the the character value of this team is 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 definitely good enough to where you know you start going through spring ball, you go through summer conditioning, you go through training camp, and uh, a seven and five season next year should not be out of the question. That shouldn't be. But uh, to me, that's that's not. Uh, I'm not overreaching by any means saying this team should be being at 7-5 and five with a first-year head coach. Jay Moore's with us here. It's Hale Varsity Radio. And, Jay, when you look ahead at the, the totality of spring ball that is still yet to come and all the news and notes that are going to be coming out about spring football, how important do you think what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks actually is when it relates to the 2023 season? The, the amount of work getting done in the spring and, and what the coaches are going up and saying to the media. How much of that do you think is, is truth and how much do you think should be taken with a grain of salt? I think everything's always taken with a grain of salt. Uh, I think you always kind of get a feel in the tone. I think Matt does a good job of, of calling it how it is, uh, how it is. And, and I think he, if he mentioned guys in, in a press conference after practice or whatever it is, uh, he might be trying to get to, 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 through to that player in a different way, you know, cause you know, the people are, <laughs> are able to see everything and hear everything anymore. You know, this long gone are the days of you have to find a newspaper to see what uh, your head coach said about in a post game, you know, or post practice conference. So that could be one. But I always think there there is a there's a grain of salt with with everything, and especially anymore, just in in the media. But I think he's going to do a really good job of being up front and, and calling it how it is. Like I said, being very black and white. I just think that's how he operates. Uh, if he has, he's going to protect. He's going to protect himself, his players, and his staff if need be. But if he's you know be up front and call it and calling a spade a spade, he's going to call a spade a spade, and I, I think that's healthy, and I think that's what this program needs. Um, I, I I think we need that black and white. I think we need that that uh, 
you know, that fine detail in understanding where they are and, and where they're at. And you, I think you'll hear that from them. But like I said, um, I think you always have to take everything with a grain of salt. But I think when Matt says it, you know, I, I do I do think he, he means what he says and, and has um, a certain message to, to get forth. Jay, we'll get you out of here shortly. What needs to happen with the three three five? What can happen in the spring? Yeah, well, yeah, it's just fine. I think understanding who who are those three guys up front. I mean, you always got to f- figure out who your D line is going to be. And as long as football is going to be around, you better you better know who your guys up front. They're putting their hand in the dirt, and how they're going to work, and how they're going to operate. So I think you need to solidify that. Uh, you know, Ty Robinson is going to be a, a key cog in that. You know, you know, Elijah Judy, the transfer from A and M, will probably be a key cog in that. It's just. Finding and building, uh, finding those three guys, and probably finding nine guys that you know you can ro- rotate in and out at those three spots. And then I think it's a little easier to identify who your linebackers and your secondary is going to be. I think that's probably more of your where your strength, the team, and the defense has not only has been not only last year, but probably this year as well. So I think finding those roles is just identifying what is expected of you at that position. And then just, you know, getting better every day and just, under, and just you know, identifying every day what you need to improve on from the, from everyone that in that standpoint. And just cause, I mean, we know the 335 is, is going to be, is, uh, is a chaotic, crazy, you know, you might not see, uh, you might get seven different looks throughout, you know, throughout the game. So uh, I'm excited to see the process, but again, you got to figure out who those, you know, those six to nine guys are going to be playing up front for you guys for on Saturdays. Because if you don't have those guys, then those, you know, the, the eight guys behind you, they don't, they're not going to matter too much. What's Wynn's ceiling? Man, that's, you know, that's a good question. Saw sparks out of him, you know, last year. Again, you just got to, he's got to become more consistent. I think he didn't come in the best of shape last year. Yeah, I, I believe there was. I don't know if he missed some of uh, summer conditioning. I can't. I know he was a little out of shape when he came in here. But the guy's got the tools, and he, you saw good flashes out of him last year. It's just becoming more consistent. You know, I think you get him. I think he could be a day one starter. I, I, I really do, just because he was able to show some results and, and show you know that he's he can play in this conference last year at times. So I think if he can mature, develop. Take to new coaching. Take to what you know. Um, like I doesn't remember us pot roast, the D line coach. Um, that take you know his his knowledge, his breadth of knowledge. Uh, he can be pretty good. I don't. I mean, I don't know if he's a you know a first day NFL draft pick by any means, but I think the guy can can play on Sundays. He's got the build. He's just got to do it more consistently. Jay, whenever you look at some of the older guys on that defense, win included, but I also look at, at Ty Robinson, Luke Reimer, Quentin Newsom, just to, to name one from every level of the defense, how important is it through spring practice to get one or multiple of those guys stepping up as leaders within the defense? As you flip into a new 3-3-5, is that going to be important right now in the spring, or is that something that as you get closer to fall and as you get closer to first game, those leaders will start to emerge on, on their own accord? No, I think I think they've done a good job of identifying the leadership through winter conditioning. I think they they wanted to establish that first and foremost. I do know spring ball helps solidify, helps validate, because there's always one thing that you can become a, a hoot and holler and, and a rah rah guy during workouts, but man, as as soon as you got to go against someone else, and uh, it's 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 always interesting to see those leaders come out in certain situations when. You know your your sense of pride can get taken by by another teammate, and it gets rather competitive. So it, that's gonna be interesting to see. But I think you coming out of uh, coming out of spring ball, you're gonna know your leadership. Your leadership is gonna be, and then you're gonna have those communications through. Then it's gonna even validate more through through uh, summer conditioning, and then it's then once you hit to uh, training camp when it's it's go time, and you know we got to get ready for the season. You you know you know those. I don't know, four, five, six, hell, ten guys. I don't know who could, how many guys could be out there, but you know who you got to rely on and who you can you can communicate with and who you can lean on to kind of raise some guys out of out of uh, you know some sticky situations or even you know the dog days of training camp when it is you know the second week and it's the tenth practice and you know you're you're tired of running your head against each other for for the last ten days, man. It's you need those leadership to step up and and really speak to what's important and get to everyone kind of, 
back back to focus on you know what really matters. Jay Moore is with us, Black Shirt Husker NFL or at Jay Moore 44, co-host Big Red Wrap Up, and uh, joining us uh, on a Monday as we're live here in Columbus, Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. Jay, we'll let you get back to it, man. Thanks for squeezing us in, and uh, we'll uh, expect more of that wardrobe uh, showcase here next week if we uh, if we run you down. I appreciate that. We'll make this into a regular Monday fashion show, I guess. I have real fear that Jay doing a fashion show would be like the opening scene of Slapshot with a uh, a fashion show. Have you uh, you seen Slapshot yet, Elijah? Uh, yes, but not like I, I couldn't quote it. I couldn't quote Hold it. Hold on a minute. Uh, one more time. You, okay, I yes. didn't have you up all the way. So you've seen Slapshot, where the the owner of the Charlestown Chiefs has his players also doing a fashion show. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I right? You. And and one of the defensemen who can just rock the goatee fancies himself an enforcer, has chose wor- choice words for the owner, and then frightens everybody in the front row. Because <laughs> he's wearing a robe. <laughs> Jay wouldn't be wrong like that but I don't, I don't know that we walk down the old fashion show choice with uh, with with black shirt jay he could pull it off though. well if we if you uh, and i the if you and out. i came in next week just wearing something crazy something that it's fashionable i mean we got the whole video streaming portion now we, we could do a little a little streaming fashion show I, I like it i like the idea well in true major league fashion you've got charlie sheen's character with the uh, the leather vest and, uh, and just the tie, no shirt. <laughs> I look like a banker in this. We'll wind down a Monday Hail Varsity Radio road show here at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill in Columbus. And now. And now. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. One final time, a tip of the cap to the amazing folks here in Columbus, here at the Big Ten Sports Bar and Grill. The great listeners uh, in Columbus News Talk 900, the Corey Schlesinger shrine, the the jersey from uh, one of Nebraska's greatest fullbacks. It's been awesome. It's been awesome to meet uh, folks in Columbus. It's been awesome to be on the road. We will play the Pete Rose game, What Are the Odds, with Junior and his baseball team today. I think Junior's got a very talented team he's on. Uh, I think it's a 50-50 coin flip with whether Junior plays or not tonight. We'll see. I don't know that he pitches. And uh, we are going to, at a conservative estimation, say he goes he goes 0 for 3 tonight. Damn. But walks once. Damn. Harsh what? starts the season from you. Is your kid no, you're talking No, if about? I'm wrong, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I know. Well, he thinks I'm a horrible father, clearly. And... I'm, 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 you know, going up. He doesn't want me to sit near him uh, at, at the game, so I'm going to have to sit out in right field. You've seen that thing on Facebook, right, where the the kids' parents, where they're set. Yeah, the, the little graphic that has the, the stereotypical which type of parent sits where. Yes. Uh-huh. Helicopter overbearing loser father out in right field. <laughs> I'll be there by myself. Uh, there'll be the... Uh, supportive but silent parents along third or first baseline that just are there to watch uh, their son perform well. And then you got the pitcher's dad right behind home plate who thinks everything's a strike. Oh, Don't forget about him. Right. And, and this <laughs> coming from an umpire. <laughs> what are you looking at, Blue? No, I get it. I get it. Roadshow today. Roadshow Friday as uh, we're at the Hale Varsity Club in La Vista. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, Hale Varsity Club, uh, Creighton tips off 8 o'clock, I believe, Friday night. So we'll be there getting you cranked up ahead of Creighton and uh, Princeton. I don't know what the, the, the promotion is. I believe they're going to have... I, I uh, haven't checked. I, I believe they're going to have live music on Friday night following the Creighton game uh, as well as that, sure. actually. So you can make That'll it a whole night. You can make it Hale Varsity Radio. You can make it Creighton Princeton. Then live music at the Hale Varsity Club following us, if my memory serves me correctly there. So sounds like a whole night. 
Uh, Milford writes in. What does he say here? Chris at HaleVarsity.com. Oh, now the phone's freaking out on me. Something about what kids on the team are in are members of a gang. <laughs> I got to get the full email uh, read out there. Well, Smitty, what but I'll Hale say. Varsity Club. Uh, continue, continue. Friday, 4 to 6 in La Vista. Come see us before you get uh, hunkered down for Creighton and Princeton. The, what I was saying is if you, if you show up with a pocket protector in, in honor of Princeton, do you get a, uh, a discount? I don't know. I think you get kicked I got to throw a little nerd shade at the Ivy League. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm Never kidding. a shot at ever getting in. Uh, what I will say, though, Schmitty, <laughs> with, uh, with your son's baseball game tonight before we get out of here is I feel like early in the season it's a nice day. The bats tend to heat up before the pitcher's arms do early in this season. I think, uh, I think it's a two for four type day. Two for four type day. No runs batted in, but a couple of solid singles. That's my projection. Wow. I hope you're right. We'll see. Uh, Hail Varsity presented by Currency for all your equipment financing needs. Go Currency. Get the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Uh, Download Hail Varsity Radio. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Columbus.